Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where an entitled Karen tries to steal from a disabled child. Our next Reddit post is from Angsy. Backstory, my daughter is disabled. She has nonverbal autism and a traumatic brain injury, which means she looks relatively normal, but she is profoundly disabled. I rarely take her out into public alone because she's so hard to manage, especially now that she's almost nine. Not only will she not stay with me, she'll bolt like a greyhound, scream, rip things open, steal toys from babies, and otherwise be an impossible nuisance. For this reason, I almost always order what I need for delivery, including groceries. However, life is unpredictable sometimes, and every so often I have to brave a trip to the grocery store. A few years ago, the gods smiled down on me, and the local grocery store I prefer started using the Caroline cart. If you don't know what that is, it's a special cart with a large seat for disabled children who are too big for a toddler seat. They park it with the scooters and wheelchairs with a big blue handicap marker on it so that parents don't mistakenly use it for their older, able-bodied children. But admittedly, this doesn't seem to stop them. I see people using it all the time like one of the car carts. You know, carts with a toy car attached for their kid to drive while they shop. This particular day a few weeks ago, the snow was so heavy and intense that not only was school cancelled, but so was my grocery delivery. I would have to go to the store with my daughter. As usual, I walked in praying that the Caroline cart would be available and thank goodness it was. Strapping my daughter into the seat, I started shopping. As usual, my first stop was the bakery to get a fresh cookie. They always hand them out to the kids. I noticed right away that there were a lot of other kids there that day and assumed that many parents were like me, saddled with their kids during the snow day and unable to get grocery delivery. The bakery was hopping and there were a number of parents and kids waiting for a new batch of cookies to be ready. One of the mothers seemed particularly harried and I can't say I blamed her. Her daughter, around five, was having a meltdown. She was angry, crying, shouting, and demanding a cookie. They aren't ready yet, honey. We just have to wait. Noticing the glances of everyone around her, she looked defensive but apologized, saying, I'm sorry, she's very tired. It's past her nap time. No one said anything. We were all parents. We understood. My daughter didn't like the noise, and as she often does when she's irritated, she was stimming. That is, flapping her hands and pushing a fist into her ear over and over. I got out her Minnie Mouse phone and handed it to her and she calmed down and started playing with it. Looking over, the entitled mother saw us and looked inexplicably relieved. Oh, thank goodness. That cart wasn't there when we came in. Do you mind if I use it? Entitled kid is exhausted. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, but my daughter actually needs it. She's disabled. The entitled mother blinked and looked at my daughter playing quietly with her toy. She doesn't look disabled. What's wrong with her? Can she walk? I was flabbergasted at how insanely rude that was. Uh, yes, she can walk, but she would run off in a hot second. I can't hang on to her and shop at the same time. So, you're using the disabled cart because your daughter doesn't listen to you? Look, she's much older than my little girl and she seems fine. We really need the cart. She started coming over and I protectively pulled the cart closer to me. Um, no, she has autism. Jesus, everyone has autism. That's not a real disability. I was pretty pissed at this point. The cart is for disabled children like you just said, not sleepy children. Why don't you use a car cart? There aren't any car cards. Besides, I can't see her in that. Just let me use your cart. The shouting upset my daughter again and she started doing the thing where she punches her ear over and over. It was the first time she looked abnormal and the woman looked visibly distraught and sort of grossed out. By now, other people were paying more attention and this wonderful older woman said, Ma'am, autism can be a very severe disability. Look, you're upsetting the little girl and the card is for disabled children. You need to stop now. I mouthed a silent thank you to the older woman, wishing I could go hug her because that was some Wonder Woman level intervention to speak up that way. But my daughter was upset, so I decided to skip the cookie and just leave, so I turned the cart around and walked off. No one stopped me, but the same older woman who had stood up for me saw us waiting in line and insisted I go in front of her so I could get home. I was so grateful. My little girl was, at that point, possessively clutching the string of a helium balloon that I was intending to buy, but I was debating how to get it away from her so I could get it scanned without making her flip out because you can't just take stuff from her. 
The kind old lady saw my struggle and reached out to tear the scan code sticker off the string and put it with her purchases. I've got it. She winked at me and my little girl and said, I think you could use a little extra kindness today. Oh no, it's an $8 balloon, really. I insist. I thanked her profusely and left with tears in my eyes, touched. I love it when people make my day a little easier. Man, when are people going to learn that not all disabilities are visible? And this lady saying that autism isn't a real disability and that everyone has it is super disgusting. I really wish we had less people like this entitled mother in the world and more people like that grandmother. Our next Reddit post is from Gabriel's My Patronus. My neighbor, Rick, and his wife had a big birthday party for their five-year-old daughter. He even went out and got a huge blow-up water slide for the kids. When he went with his wife and daughters to return the slide to the person they rented it from, their car broke down. I got a message from them asking if I could pick them up, since I drive an SUV and could accommodate all of them, including two car seats. I said sure, no problem, and hit it out. On the way home, I asked them if they needed to stop anywhere to pick up anything. I needed cigarettes, so I told them it wouldn't be an issue if they needed to stop off somewhere. Rick said he needed cigarettes too, so I stopped at the local convenience store. When we were getting out, the oldest daughter asked if she could get a milkshake. Her mom told her no, they didn't have the extra money for that right now, what with having to pay to have their car towed home. When we got inside, I asked Rick what kind of milkshake his girls liked, that I was going to get them one as a treat for being good after having to deal with a car breaking down and all. He said I didn't have to do that, and I told him it wasn't a big deal. It was just a milkshake, and I wanted to do it. We walked over to the order screen and he ordered two chocolate shakes, one with whipped cream, one without. I got my order slips and headed to the cashier. Now, at this store, you place the order, pay for the order, then pick up your food or beverage. Rick had already purchased his cigarettes, so he waited there for the shakes while I went to pay. I chatted with the clerk, paid for my stuff, and turned back to the counter to get the shakes. And then, things got weird. Rick said, Hey, what were those order numbers again? 106 and 108. I thought so. Hey, that's my shake. This was directed to a kid who had grabbed a chocolate shake off the counter. My mom said I could have a chocolate shake, and this one is just sitting here. It's mine now. Um, that's not how it works, kid. Give me the shake. You didn't pay for it. My mom said... And then the entitled mother comes in. What are you doing? Why are you yelling at my son? I paid for that shake. You didn't. I have the order slip. He can't just walk up and grab something off the counter like it's his. Well, I haven't ordered his yet, so just let him have that one. You can order another one for yourself, like you really need it. Now, I'm a bit curvy, but I am in no way, shape, or form obese. And even if I was, you don't take someone's shake. Rick says, oh shoot. And I say, excuse me? What did you just say? The clerk said, here's your second shake. Wait, where's the first one? Is something wrong? Lady, I've already paid for both of those shakes, and not that it's your business, but neither are for me. They're for his daughters. So your son can put the shake down and you can both walk the hell away from me, or you're going to see what a chocolate shake enema feels like. The entitled mother says to the clerk, She just threatened me. You need to call the cops. I can't believe she's trying to take away my son's shake. Lady, she ordered and paid for them, not you. And I didn't hear a threat, did you? The other cashier shakes their head no. I want my shake. I'm going to call the cops on you for threatening me. Go ahead, and I'm sure these awesome workers will also call them on you for theft of milkshake. Last chance, lady. Either your kid puts the shake back on the counter, or you'll be leaking chocolate syrup out of your butt for days. The entitled mother grabs a shake from her son and slams it on the counter so hard that it exploded all over the clerk in the counter. When she realized what she had done, she grabbed her son's arm and yanked him out the door, running for her car. The poor clerk was covered in chocolate shake. The cashier went behind the counter to make a new shake, and the clerk left for the back to try and clean herself up. I felt so bad for the clerk, but the cashier said her shift was ending in less than 30 minutes, so she was going home shortly and could get a shower. I thanked them both for the shakes and sticking up for me, and Rick and I went out to the car. He told his wife the story, and she laughed so hard, I thought she would fall out of the car. She had seen Entitled Mother and Entitled Kid running out of the store. Our next Reddit post is from Blau Amis. So, I live in Germany, where the government is planning to give everyone who is eligible of child support 300 additional euros over the course of three months, due to the disadvantages of the corona crisis still going on. I already have my own flat, and I study, so I'm still able to receive payment. 
For some reason though, my money always gets sent to my mother's bank account and she sends it to me. It's worked out so far, but she usually sends me 10 euros less than what I'm supposed to receive. I never cared too much because I don't want to complain about 10 bucks. So I gave my mother a call and asked her if she saw the news and reminded her to send me the money which would be 100 additionally each month for 3 months altogether. She suddenly said, Well, I'll take 150. We both deserve it, don't we? I was shocked and asked her what she intends to spend it on. I could finally go on some short trips and buy expensive food, was her response. Just a short note, my mother has been jobless ever since I was born and has refused to get a job to this day. She often cries about how I have more money than her and it's unfair. So she literally told me that it's perfectly fine to just take half of the money that's supposed to be for me. OP, I've read a lot of stories like this and you need to go to the bank ASAP and open an account in your own name. And just a suggestion, I think that you should run a credit check because I wouldn't be surprised if she's opening bills in your name. If she's petty enough to steal $10 from her own kid, who knows what else she's doing. Our next Reddit post is from Bob of the CPU. Some important and relevant backstory first. 18 months ago, I was diagnosed with colon cancer. It wasn't long before I had to have surgery to remove the tumor. It was an 18 hour surgery. They removed about a foot of my large colon and 18 lymph nodes. I woke up in the intensive care unit. When I looked down, I had a long scar running down the center of my body. It starts just below my chest and runs past my belly button to just above my pubes. I also have a reversible colostomy. It's important to understand that I have an appliance stuck to the side of my torso that collects my poop. I have to then empty the bag instead of pooping. I also have to change the whole appliance every 4 days. I will soon be able to have my colon put back together and no longer deal with this thing. Anyway, this morning, I was at one of those large office buildings next to a hospital. I was waiting to see my surgeon to discuss when he was going to reconnect my colon. This place has one of those enormous waiting rooms for multiple doctors. I know there's going to be a long wait as my surgeon is very much in demand so I brought my Nintendo Switch. I was sitting playing my game for a few minutes when Entitled Dad and Entitled Kid sit near me. I hear the kid say, Wow, Dad, look, that guy has a Switch. He just says, Yeah, I see. I'm very outgoing and love to talk, so I asked the father if he minds I play a few games with his son. The father, at this point, seems perfectly normal and says, Yeah, no problem. The kid looked to be around 10 or 11. I'm in my mid-30s, but have been a lifelong gamer. I also have 7 nieces and nephews, so I play games with kids his age all the time. I placed the switch on the side table near us and handed the kid one of the Joy-Cons. We played a couple of races before he asked what else I had. I brought out Smash Bros. Ultimate and the kid was jumping up and down. We played Smash for nearly an hour before I heard my name called. I raised my hand and said here so the nurse saw me and I quickly grabbed the Joy-Con from his hands and packed the switch away in my backpack and began walking towards the nurse. Just as I make it to the nurse, I feel someone tap my shoulder. The entitled dad says, Hey man, can you let my son play with your Switch while you're in with the doctor? Sorry man, I had a blast playing with him, but who knows if you'll be here when I get back, I responded. So, you're a god dang adult, why do you need it anyway? I was astounded, so I just turned to follow the nurse who was holding the door open for me. It's important to note that during the hour I was playing with this kid, my colostomy bag had been filling up. At this point, it was more than half full. I'm wearing a t-shirt, so you can see the outline of it when this happens. Just to give you context, a few weeks ago, a police officer thought I was carrying a gun under my shirt because of this. So it looks like there's something large in my front pocket. The entitled dad says, You fat turd! You're gonna give my son the game or else! The nurse finally says, Sir, please leave the man alone. I appreciate the attempt, but it sounded rather weak. The guy was about 6 foot 4 and looked like a weightlifter, so I guess he was used to intimidating other people. As he alluded to, I'm a large guy. I'm about 6 foot 2 and I am overweight, so I'm used to not being intimidated. I responded with, Not gonna happen. He decided to make it physical. I was only half facing him. He grabbed my shoulder, spun me around to face him and with his other hand starts trying to get under my shirt. He's yelling, Give me it! Give me it you fat turd! He eventually gets a hold of my appliance and pulls as hard as he can. I don't know if he thought it was a switch because it's soft. I screamed in pain because the adhesives that hold this thing on are strong. 
He actually managed to rip some of my skin off. The bag is perfectly sealed while it's attached to me, but as he pulled it towards himself, a bunch of poop came flying out all over his shirt, pants, and shoes. When he pulled it, he turned it upside down while trying to cup it in his grasp, and he began to run away. He realized something was wrong halfway through his turn. I got a little on my shirt, but the bleeding was a problem. The nurse led me quickly back into a room, and I had my surgeon in the room in a matter of seconds, making sure I was okay. I keep a spare appliance in my bag, so I was back in business in no time. I washed my shirt out in the sink. Only a very small part got any on it, and it was easy to clean with soap and water. It got me home at least. I later found out that the man just stood there for a while, stunned. The front desk people were laughing when they told me this. They said he seemed completely shocked that it wasn't a game. Apparently, he dropped the appliance and yelled for his son and tried to leave. Security caught up with him pretty quickly, and he was arrested. I have to go make a statement tomorrow. And then OP posted an update. I just came out from giving my official statement. I'm typing this in my car. I was expecting to go see a police officer this morning. I got a call over an hour ago from a lawyer from the prosecutor's office, and she asked me to come to her office instead. Apparently, the entitled dad was arrested and released. I also caused a bit of an argument in the prosecutor's office. <laughs> Two of the lawyers were arguing over whether grabbing my bag was assault or theft. One was arguing it was part of my body, while the other argued it was my property. When I arrived, the woman explained that for the moment, he was only charged with a misdemeanor. However, once they settle the debate, they'll be adding a further charge. I wasn't told any of this until I gave my statement. She told me the chances of him going to trial is slim, so I probably won't have to testify. Oh, and I had no say in whether he was prosecuted. He was being prosecuted whether or not I gave a statement because of all the witnesses. So, OP, if this guy gets charged with theft, then he is literally a turd burglar. That was r slash entitled parents, and if you like this video, then check out my podcast where I publish the exact same content. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.